a late bloomer. We're going to show you an example of a player, late bloomer. There's two types of players, teenage sensation, late bloomer. Not too many players are teenage sensations. Just think of the world-class tennis players. How many of them were at the very, very top as teenagers? When you watch the tape, pay attention to the date. The work was done in one month. And it's going to look very mechanical. But why we show this tape often is the player was 19 years old. Most people get to the point at the age of 19 where they think they're too old to change. You're never too old to change. You can always go back, work on basics. Let's take a minute and look at this clip. Okay, first day, filming the player, 45 degree angle. The tape is dated, but this is the pre-date. Now, grip, swing, and body. Watch the shape of the swing. Look at the path of the racket. Watch what he does with his left arm. To improve your analytical eye. What does he do with the racket face? Now, we always tease people that we put him in a better outfit. Now, he looks very mechanical. He looks very robot-like. But again, don't judge the unfinished product. With technical teaching, you have to have technical training. So the pre and post was done in one month. He had to make changes. And you can still see traces of the old, how the racket goes back too far. This is a player at the age of 19. We told him he needed to go back to the drawing board. He went to a very famous academy and he was told he just needed more match play. TNT, talent and technique, certainly had the talent, but he did not have the technique. The racket and body should be in sync. The racket and body are up, and they go down together and back up together. He sets the racket through a unit turn. There's an interrelationship of strokes from the ready position. As he turns, the ready position is the forehand volley. The ready position becomes the backswing for the forehand ground stroke. Keep in mind, we want to ask a player to hit down the line just to give them the best chance of having the longest hitting zone. Now, we did this with all his strokes. We're just showing you the forehand. The, ra the racket has to go high, low, high, and inside out. Inside out means he's going to swing from close to away from his body, but he's swinging outside in. Oh, he looks like he's been in the garage and he's been taking the bicycle tire that's turned upside down and brushing it. But that's a nice example of a pre-post. Let's go to the classroom. Okay, let me make uh, three points regarding this pre-post example. Yes, you can change your strokes even when you're 19 years old. You can be 29 years old, 39 years old. You can always improve. You can always go back to basics. Number two... This clip is shown to you at the beginning of the course. Make a mental note, go back to this clip at the end of the course, and you'll, it'll make a lot more sense to you. The shape of the swing doesn't match the shape of the court. He has a merry-go-round swing, and the ball rotates like a Frisbee. He wants to have a Ferris wheel, Ferris wheel swing, and the ball rotates like a bicycle tire. The third point is one of the coaches who helped me helped this young player many, many years ago. And when he was 19, so five years later, he's on the tour. He's at the U.S. Open. He's on a practice court. He yells out to one of our players or one of our former coaches. And he says, hey. And he takes a ball like this, drop hits it, ends up on perfect balance. And then he went out and lost to Kafelnikov, who at one time was number one in the world. He lost to him in five sets at the U.S. Open. So yes, this player who's swinging like this, 